So if you if you like, you can have a look at the assignment, open it up with me and have a look at it right now. So this assignment is probably the hardest assessment for this subject. Okay, but for you guys who've finished 5 ICW, you know, the basic part of it, it can be done right now, okay? So trust me, there's nothing that's gonna be in the assignment that you uh, won't be asked to do in the worksheets, okay? So it, you'll be asked to do a lot more in the worksheets than what's required in the assignment. So it doesn't require you to go forth and reinvent anything from scratch. It asks you to basically adapt what you learn in the worksheet be uh, to be like uh, done in the assignment sort of and and what I'm trying to do is give you sort of a more of a workplace environment when we're doing this worksheet okay and this assignment I mean uh, there are some merit sections which require you to do a little bit more research and that's obviously not for pass or not for pass so you don't have to do the merit sections so if we have a quick look at the assignment together and I'll, I'll explain what I want you to do today but basically, before anyone leaves today, I want to have a few things checked off. Okay, and I'll tell you what they are before you go today. So if you remember from your 5 ICW, there was a company, fictitious company called Earthy's Confectionery. It continues on. Okay, so basically last term or last time, you built a network for, for them. You've been basically, the scenario is you've been asked back to extend their network. So in the first assignment, you probably noticed that we talked about two sites, but really we didn't worry about the second site. We just worry about the Adelaide site. In this assignment, we're going to get that second site up and going, and we're going to install some more uh, services into the into the first site as well. So basically, the backstory is here. Pretty easy to understand. Uh, it's just a bit of backstory of how the company came to be and who's in charge. Unlike your five ICW assignment. Um, you do not have to create any documentation as far as getting the past okay so for the merit section you have to uh, do some research and write up some a, a, a little report but for the uh, for the past there's only a table to fill out and basically a practical assignment okay no documentation required I'm sure you guys will be glad of that no need to get those screenshots okay but what my expectation is just just like on the workplace, okay? So if your boss gave you a task to do, like this is the task, yeah, go off and do it, yeah. Do you think in the workplace seventy percent is adequate? No, probably not, okay. And if you keep on delivering just seventy percent, seventy percent every time, I'm sure your boss would eventually think that you're not up to the task, really, okay? So in this assignment, it's no longer seventy percent pass mark; it's a hundred percent pass mark of the past section. Okay, the merit section is a separate story. You don't have to do it. You can do it to get a credit or distinction. But for the pass section, it's a hundred percent pass mark. And but um, uh, but like the workplace, there's no say. Hey, you got two attempts and then you pass or fail. In the workplaces, you keep on doing it until it's done, isn't it? Okay, or well, that the project is due. Okay, so basically we're starting the project today. If you want to think of it, I'm the project manager. Uh, you're the, my implementation team. Okay. So basically, instead of you guys working as a big group as a team, you're working as individuals. Each one of you is an individual team. That doesn't mean you can't consult with each other. Just like in the real workplace, if I had a, if I was trying to do a new project, but I didn't have as much experience as my friend, I can definitely talk to him about it. Okay, so with this assignment, even though you're working as individuals, there's nothing to say you can't talk to your friend and learn together. In fact, I encourage it, okay? I find that the people who have done this project done really well. I sort of worked in little collaborative teams and helped each other understand different elements of the assignment. Sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, what does this mean? Instead of, hey, you might not you know, have a chance to ask me, but you could ask each other. Or it could be that, oh, I just finished that section and I didn't like this. And it might be just a back and forth for to say, yeah, that's a good way. Or that's, oh, did you, did you consider this or something like that? So basically what I'm trying to do is encourage that sort of, yeah, sort of communication, networking, just like, yeah, not the networking we're teaching, but the social networking side of things, okay? In the workplace, no one actually works on their own, purely on their own forever. Most people bounce ideas off each other, learn from each other, okay? That's what I'm trying to encourage in the classroom. So even though you're doing the project on your own, I encourage you that to learn from each other, to help each other. And obviously, if someone's made a mistake and I've given them feedback that this is the mistake, you should have done it this way. It shouldn't be just that one person that gets that feedback. It should be everyone that's 
within earshot would say that, hey, if I did it like he did it, maybe that's the same feedback I'm going to get, that type of thing, okay? So let's get back to the assignment. So it's 100% pass mark, but it's an ongoing process. We're going to start today, but pretty much every session, every practical session or IT practical tutorial session you attend with me, we can get things ticked off and you can be working on this. So I would suggest as we're learning the different topics, you actually cover the topics, understand the topics, do the worksheet for the topics, and then try to implement it into assignment. So it's an ongoing process, not just uh, I do everything for the uh, worksheet now and then I do all the assignment later. It's sort of ongoing, it's building up. Okay, and with this thing, with this assignment, if you're keeping on top of it, it's a lot easier to do than say if you try to do it all in the last minute. And also, just like any project, I'll give you milestones. For example, it's like a certain sec certain uh, point you need to get up to by a certain point of the term. Okay, for example, by the end of today, you should have built what we're going to call the Golden Master. And you're going to have what we're going to call these link clones that are ready to go. Okay, what I mean by ready to go, the virtual hardware is good. The virtual networking is good. The fact that they've all been sys prepped and we'll talk a little bit more detail about that a little bit later and the fact that they're all uh, created and named and given us IP address correctly okay so that's what I'm going to check off today but by the end of this week I would expect you to have installed Active Directory on the domain controller and possibly created all the users and groups because you'll see the users and groups are pretty much the same as what we used last term okay and that's something we, I assume that you guys already understand so it's nothing, uh, that part is nothing new, but it's what we use those users and group later on to do that's going to be new. Okay, we're going to implement DFS, we're going to implement VPNs, we're going to implement uh, network policy server, we're going to implement a whole heap of stuff. Okay, but that's to come. But like I said, a lot, uh, everything that you'll be asked to do in the assignment will be covered in your worksheets. It's just a matter of taking the worksheets, adapting it changing the figures changing the settings to suit the new requirements just like anything okay anyone can just follow a worksheet and do a b c d in that order always in that order it's the, the, the trick is to be able to understand what you're doing there understand it process it and then take the new scenario and apply what you've learned in that new scenario and that could be just changing a figure changing a number changing a network potentially okay so there is a part, <coughs> part section, and that's called the core section. That needs to be 100% checked off, okay? And I'll give you a checklist later on today. And it's just like uh, the fast ICW checklist. Every time you get something right, I'll tick it off, and that's it. But obviously, there's also a merit section. So for those of you who want to get a credit or distinction, it's not compulsory. I would recommend that you don't look at this until you've totally finished your core section, okay? And there's, uh, there's basically three merit points up, to, up for grabs in this assessment, and there's three in the Fury test, and combines up to six. Okay, three, three merit points will get you a credit, three or four, five or six will get you a distinction for this subject. So if we actually have a look at the big picture, okay, here it is. This is what we want to achieve at the end of the day. At the end of the term, which is effectively our project delivery date, this is what we want to achieve, okay? We want to achieve two sites, Adelaide site and Elizabeth site. At Adelaide site, you've got a, yeah, RWDC, uh, which stands for Read Write Domain Controller, which is a normal domain controller. At the Elizabeth, Elizabeth site, instead of having a RWDC, you're going to have an RODC, and hopefully from worksheet two, you would remember what RODC is all about. At the Adelaide site, you're going to have a file server. At Elizabeth site, you're going to have a file server. And you know what? They're going to contain the same files. So then we're going to learn about how DFS, distributed file service, will replicate those files from the two sites to keep them exactly the same. Synchronized changes and so forth. <clears throat> we're also going to have a RAS at the Adelaide and Elizabeth. And the RAS is, stands for Remote Access Server. And basically, this RAS will allow our users to work from home, dial in from home. So Effectively, you know, if you're at home with your internet connection, you can dial in and still access the resources and do work that you might have to, uh, you might not have done in at the workplace. These RAS servers will also be obviously used to connect the two sites together. Okay, once we've our VPNs connected, our RODC and 
WDC will replicate, obviously. Our DFS will that use that VPN to actually replicate the files as well, synchronize the files. So you can see uh, this is the big picture. But obviously, we're not doing it in a real life situation. We don't have two physical sites that you can go off and configure everything needs to be done. But so what we're going to do is going to virtualize everything. OK, so the way we're going to do it is that uh, on your computer in front of you, we're going to have this side on the VMNet1 network. OK, you guys understand what I what I mean by when I say VMNet1. So that's one of the virtual networks on VMware Workstation. And this is going to be on the VMNet2 network. OK, so if you know your VMware Workstation, you'll know that that means they're on separate networks and they can't communicate normally. Then these two RAS servers will have more, uh, two interfaces, one that is connected to the network they belong to and one which is going to be bridged. And when we say bridge, it means connected to the physical network here in the classroom. OK, same as these ones. OK, uh, so basically through the bridge network or the physical network that represents the Internet for us. OK, they're going to form a VPN connection using IPsec for VPN authentication and encryption. And then once that VPN is connected, traffic will be routed through these RAS servers from one side to the other side. So basically, at the end of the day, these RAS servers will become the router or gateway for their respective networks. OK, so that's what we want to achieve. OK, so it's, uh, it sounds big, sounds, uh, yeah, maybe some for some of you guys, yeah, too big. But trust me, it's a, it's a progression of steps. You get one thing working, next thing, next thing. You break it down to the smallest parts. So if you look at this, your Adelaide site will have this subnet. You guys all understand the fact that that's a class C subnet and it's a class C subnet mask, which means that if I if this XX is different between every one of you guys, you're going to have different networks, aren't you? OK, so I'm going to give it, come around and give you that number. OK, so don't give yourself that number because I don't want anyone to have a conflict, because if you do have a conflict on the real network, when you're sharing the real network together, you potentially could cause problems. OK, most likely not, but potentially you could. So I want to avoid that. So you'll see that the Adelaide site and the Lizard site has different variables, which means they have to be different from each other. The one of the things that makes the routing work is that they have to be on different subnets, don't they? So therefore, if you suddenly use the same number for both sites, that's not going to work. So I'll give you both these numbers. And just like last time, your domain name is going to be called ecyoursurname.com. Uh, OK, so everyone's going to be different. Everyone's going to have a different number, all that kind of stuff. And then I'll give you some a, a few. I'm not being super detailed here, but some 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 things about your virtual machines. So obviously, the domain controller has two hard drives, 120 gig, 110 gig. The file server has two hard drives. OK, and uh, your RAS server only has one hard drive. Question? No, well, obviously we did that in the last subject and obviously in real life you would. But just to avoid something we don't have to do because we've done before, then we just leave it this time. OK, because you all been checked off for that kind of stuff last last term. So no, no RAID required for these servers, but in real life, obviously, that's a different story. OK. If you notice that these only have one network cards and they have a set IP address that's given to them. This one has two network cards. And one hard drive. And they're all obviously part of the domain. And I don't give you the Elizabeth servers, Elizabeth site servers, because basically they're exactly the same servers. OK. Slightly different because one's RODC, one's read write domain controller, but they're basically the same. OK, um, <clears throat> so basically it's a it's a reflection. So what you should be able to take out of this is that, hey, we have some commonalities here. If we look at all of these virtual machines, what is the same about all of these machines? What? Yeah, they're all on the same domain. What else is all, all, all the same about these virtual machines? 20 gig hard drive. So, so the hard drive is the same. Yeah. So they all got 20 gig. Sorry? Yeah, the, there's some differences, but there, there's some consistencies which are the same. Anything else? 
Anything else that you can think of these servers as being the same? Well, what about the operating system? Is that exactly the same operating system? Yeah, yeah, except for the Windows 7 client, but pretty much all the other virtual machines, the majority of the virtual machines in these are exactly the same operating system, isn't it? Okay, so basically we all know about cloning from 4 IBM. Okay, so why build every server from scratch? So today what I'm gonna get you to do is create what's called a golden master. Okay, golden master, which is effectively a template virtual machine. So what I want you to do is actually look at all the virtual machines, look at what is the same. Same operating system, same hard drive, and same network, the fact that they have at least one network card. And they are, uh, and so work out what's the same. Obviously the more things you can include in that template that's the same means less work per virtual machine after the fact, okay? So, so later on, after you've uh, finished creating this golden master and creating your clones, then you can look at the rest of the requirements. You'll see that, like I said, the users, as far as the users are concerned, and the groups are concerned, and the even the the departments are concerned, exactly the same as the five ICW course. Okay, so I'll expect you to remember the philosophy, the AGDLP philosophy from last time, and to create those users, etc. Okay, even the resource sharing, it's the same folders, it's the same permissions, nothing new so far. But it's afterwards that's where we do some new stuff. Okay, so obviously there's some things we have to have. We have to have users, we have to have groups, we have to have shares in order to actually do some of these more advanced things. So what's up, one of these more advanced things is DFS, distributed file service, between Adelaide file server and the no longer file server. Oh, sorry, not longer. Elizabeth, I keep on getting myself confused. There's also a quotering system, okay, and a also a file screening, which protects us against uh, types of files that shouldn't be stored on our files. Uh, there's also uh, there's a commercially sensitive folder where we have to implement auditing and encryption. There's a read-only read domain controller, and we, there's a DNS forwarding that we sort of learned already in the first lesson. There's VPN, there's what's called the WSUS, the Windows Security uh, Service Update Security Update, so I can't remember the acronym exactly, but it's to do with that. There's also uh, monitoring, which is basically creating uh, monitoring active directory in this case, and also forwarding critical and uh, warning events from the RAS to the file server. There's also the password policy, we haven't covered that just yet, but we will. There's a password policy and a fine grain password policy. There's various group policies that automatically mapped our drives for us, uh, automatically connect to the printer, automatically installs uh, active, uh, what's a Firefox? Uh, she says Windows 7, but it should be the Windows 10, automatically configures your uh, browser. And obviously there's a bit of research. Obviously to pass this uh, subject, you, there's yeah, some theory, some practical, but the, the, uh, the practical is the majority of the work, but there's a, some research. So basically you have to choose some of these require, uh, these topics and fill out this table, okay? Not, to the, not, to, not, not a great big essay on each of them, but enough information to give me a summary of what these things are, how you can, uh, how you can why is it a threat, how you can actually uh, what can it can affect the network and how you can actually eliminate or mitigate the risks. Same with this one, okay? And so forth. So there's a couple of tables to fill out, but it's not a great deal of work. And then there's the optional merit, okay? That's, we'll discuss this once you get a pass. So what do I want you to do today? So what do I want you to do today is I want you to actually create what's called a golden master, okay? So we'll put the steps out, out line. So I'm, I'm uh, going to list the steps here. All right. So so step one, we we are going to work out what's common. Okay. So create the VM virtual hardware.
Okay. I don't need you to create it for each one of those six servers. I just want you to create one. Okay, and that's what we're going to call the golden master. Okay, the golden master is what we call a template in other ways, but VMware they like to call it the golden master. So work out what's common. Okay, so what work out work out what is common bet between all server VMs. Okay, create the virtual hardware. Install uh, yes. So because one of the things that should be common, as we discussed before, is the operating system. Okay, that is server 2016, and we all know how to install that. Okay, we we've done five ICW. Okay, you know where the ISOs are, and you know where to get them. You uh, you know where you can how you can install it. All right. So it's, after that. So what makes life really easy when we're working with virtual machines after you've installed an operating system? What should be the next thing you should do all the time? Not Sysprep yet. VMware tools, okay? So if you don't install VMware tools at this point, you have to install on every one of your clones, okay? So VMware tools, and we know that VMware tools allows things to happen so much easily. Copy and pasting from your real computer, the virtual machine, all that kind of stuff, okay? Resizing your screen to fit your physical machine. So install VMware tools. Then, what you guys said before, step four, sysprep, okay? So this is quite important. You'll find that on all the server virtual machines or server operating systems, you'll find sysprep on the C Windows yeah, directory system 32, sysprep, and it's a sysprep.ex, oh, sorry, prep.exe. All right, so with the sysprep, we know that the, it, you get a little menu, okay? You get a little menu, and up here it's, says something uh, so OOBE OOBE out of the box experience okay down down here it will ask you if you want to restart a uh, shutdown or whatever so I want you to select shutdown okay and down here you'll have a little checkbox that actually goes says uh, generalize okay I definitely definitely I uh, want you to check this checkbox that says generalize okay I don't know uh, how should I do it I'll make it so it's actually red ticked okay that means ticked okay so generalize because if you do not generalize at this point in time it means First of all, before I even go there, why do we sysprep? Why, why do we sysprep at all? SID, the security ID, right? So every Windows computer has a unique SID. And if you have a, two computers with the same SID, they cannot exist on the same domain. It's just like, you know, it's like someone impersonating you. It's if someone has the same student ID as you and they want to study at TAFE and you both exist in the same system, it will cause all sorts of conflicts. Who got the pass in the subject? Who failed the subject? Okay, all sorts of problems. And especially when we're talking about security, when someone's impersonating another computer, that's all sorts of security problems, okay? So we, gener uh, we actually need to do sysprep to generalize. Uh, so when we generalize, we actually strip the uniqueness out of each computer, which is this uh, SID, and it, gen it regenerates a new SID. So once uh, once you've uh, so when you notice that we actually ch I chose oops I chose shutdown instead uh, shutdown instead didn't I instead of restart normally we might have chosen restart in the past but 
I've chosen shutdown. Okay. Yeah, basically you're right. It, it, the reason uh, when it actually generates a sin is when it actually turns off and reboots up and then it goes through a mini setup process. Okay, and that's when this uh, the SID gets stripped out and regenerated. And that's a good good point. So basically at that point, what I want you to do is five. I want to take a snapshot and call it golden master. Okay, call it golden master. Then after that, six, uh, I want you to clone. What kind of clone should we use? Why is that? Sorry? Save space, right? So link clone, because it, it saves disk space. Yeah, that's a good point, because obviously if each one of these uh, virtual machines is going to be about 10 to 15 gigs at least, um and if you got six of them that's a whole that's uh two of them is uh three gig uh 30 gigs so uh, times by three three is uh what's it three times three is about 90 gigs so obviously that's going to take up a lot of space on your portable hard drives and hopefully you got all got uh solid state portable hard drives so so link clone and then finally once you've created these link clones I want you to power each of the link clones up. So power up and use uh, psgetsid.exe to to actually to confirm that each has a different SID because I rather know for sure then assume because trust me if you actually don't get this right you could cause yourself so many headaches in the future like for example joining a computer to the domain you'll have all sorts of issues trying to join this computer to the domain if it has the same sit as a domain controller okay so just to make sure that everyone's on the right page and done everything correctly i want you to run ps get sid and you're probably going what the hell is ps get sid so on your l drive on its on cert 4 on 4 aws there's this PS tools, PS tools zip. Okay, so if you copy it and you put it on your, let's put, let's assume, let's make this my server, and I'll just quickly give you a demonstration of how to use the PS get sid. So if this is my server, bear with me. Um, so while it's talking about that. So we use the PS get SID and then afterwards I want you to name and assign IP address correctly. Okay, so what what do, what do I mean by that? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So in this case you notice that how I've given you the names already, except for the XX or the y, uh, YYs, def, uh, so forth. It's basically like, let's assume this is a real life situation and I'm your boss and I'm your supervisor and I've just told you that our company policy is to name our servers like this. Okay. And basically in our virtual machine name and our operating system NetBIOS name has to be the same. That's our company policy. Okay. If you go off and uh, build a server for him and you uh, you call it Bob, it sort of, sort of doesn't fit the company policy, does it? Okay, so even though it sounds trivial, sounds like, oh, why is he so picky? It's just like being in the workplace. You do something that's outside the company policy, it just doesn't fit. So I would really like you to use the Zach names for both the virtual machine name as well as the NetBIOS name. Okay, guys? So bear that in mind. Because I'm not trying to be picky, I just wanted you to comply with what our company policy is. All right, so let's have a look at my virtual machine, which should be booted up now. So remember, I said that PS get SID will tell us our SID. What is the actual SID? You can't really see the SID normally, 
so what we can do is if you remember i'll just close that i went to the l drive its cert for aws then there's a ps tools zip file copy that go to your virtual machine that you're interested in which is every one of your clones basically go to the c drive paste it in that's the beauty of vmware tools it pastes in easily extract it so let's extract all and it's going to go to the c drive ps tools okay so just remember uh, that's just remember that's where it's going ps tools there it is and then we go to our command prompt and we we go c drive ps tools ps get sid dot exe enter and then it just asks you to agree to the terms license terms and then it gives you the sid okay it's a long 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 set of digits but if i were you i just remember the last four digits of it and just to compare with a other computer so we're we're basically visually inspecting each of our uh, clones to make sure they've got a different sid you get me guys so once you've done that and we once we've assigned our names and IP address correctly, then I can actually check you off today before before you leave. That's what I meant for a couple of things. Okay, so obviously they have to be on the right network as well. Sorry, that's not it. Go back here. So there's a checklist. Here it is, the marking sheet. So basically, before you go, I can check you check you off for the Golden Master. Check you off that they're all link clones, uh, all virtual machines are link clones of the Golden Master. That your subnet address, your virtual hardware, server names are correct. That's what I want to check, check off, check you off for today. So just one last word about the Golden Master. Okay, so we know uh, which uh, from 4IVM, you know that when a when we have a virtual machine and we create a link clone from it. What happens to the link clone if the original virtual machine is damaged or corrupted? Sorry? So the clones will be affected, won't they? So if the Golden Master gets deleted or worst case scenario gets deleted, or yeah, not so worst case scenario, but you've somehow damaged or changed it to an extent where it's actually affecting the clones, that means all the clones that we just created are going to be affected, aren't they? So with the philosophy with this Golden Master is that we've got this Golden Master, it's pristine. Okay, if you were doing an enterprise virtualization uh, system, that would be converted into a template on VMware vSphere and it would never be able to be started up. Okay, but because we, we're using VMware Workstation, there's, uh, they've taken out the template idea out of it in the, uh, from the past. They used to have it, but they don't have it now. So what I want you to do is make sure you never, after you create the clones, after you sysprepped it and shut it down, you, that you never turn on the Golden Master ever again. Okay, that stays still pristine, protected. Okay, then the only things you turn on are the link clones, because we all know that if you could just delete the link clones, it wouldn't even affect any other link clones or the Golden Master. But if you do something to the link, uh, Golden Master, it will definitely affect the link clones if it's yeah serious enough. So do you guys all have a good idea what you need to do right now? Okay, good. So what I want you to do is I'll, I'll, I'll save this file, which has my different steps saved on it. It's a, it's a Visio file and I'll put it on the L drive ITS set for, for AWS subject. Okay.